Hi, my name is Helen and this is my channel, Helen Mary Jo. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're returning, thank you. And if you're a health bell, hello. So this is kind of a quick introduction to a very long video. I don't even know how long it's going to be because it's lots of films put together. And um, I we're just on our way out to a wedding reception. Um, it's a, friend, a local friend of ours daughter's wedding today and I did all the wedding flowers and so this video is mostly about the wedding flowers and it's I, without sounding like Tommy Cooper it's quite a funny story actually because um, a good while ago I was sitting in the garden which doesn't actually happen very often and I got a message you know how everyone has to message you now to say can I ring you I don't know what that's about don't get me started I don't have time to have that conversation um, and I said, yeah, sure. So my friend rang me and she said, I want to ask you a really big favour, but you must say no if you don't want to do it. Now they've got two dogs and I knew that they had a problem getting the dogs looked after because obviously all of their family and close friends are all at the wedding and they're staying at the hotel. And I was thinking, please don't ask me to have the dogs. Please don't ask me to have the dogs. You know, two dogs is a lot, plus Dolly, they'd go mad. And plus I'd actually have to stay there because one of them's very old. So anyway, I'm thinking, please don't ask me to have the dogs. And then she said, you must say no if you don't want to do it. And I was like, yeah, 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 get on with it. Already thinking, well, Rob can look, go look after the dogs. And then she said, oh, would you do Kira's wedding flowers? And I said, oh, thank God, I thought you were going to ask me to have the dog. So, kind of by accident, I said yes to the doing the flowers. Anyway, I said, look, I'll do them if they're within my capability. So, her daughter and her came around and we had a meeting and she wasn't bridezillary at all. And what she wanted was kind of within my abilities. Um, and so I said yes, but I have to say... I mean, it's been three solid days of work, a lot, it's a lot, but they do look gorgeous. And you'll see how I made them, some of them, not all of them, because it's, you know, adding filming into the mix takes it to a whole other level. So um, we're off out now. I'm wearing my dialect. Oh, there's, there's Rob, come to say hello. Come over and say hello. I'm wearing the Dialect Basil Lemonade, which is... Um, Hi, everybody. Um, Joe Malone, kind of influenced by. And have you got Dialect on? Are you getting it from the bedroom? Oh, I'll okay. show you. Okay, can you do those buttons up? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm wearing... This is a Rowan Zoe dress. Mm -hmm. I actually bought this for our daughter's 40th birthday party. You may remember that was... Uh, not last summer, the one before. And then when she bought her dress, it was a very similar fabric. So I'll show you what I'm wearing. With my Keller court shoes, the most comfortable court shoes I've ever owned. And uh, at last I get to wear this dress. So as I say, the rest of this video, what did you choose? Spice the top, oh, you'll be lucky. Um, so it's just a quick intro and then the rest of the video will be making the table arrangements, the, um, I think I do one of the bouquets and, you know, if you've got any questions, you can ask me. So we're running a bit late now, as usual. I thought I'd have a nice relaxing time and then suddenly I looked at the clock and it was uh, crazy. So... Off we go. So here I am. It is absolutely pouring down with rain, like tipping it down. And I am on my way to the wholesalers to get all the flowers for this wedding that I'm prepping for this week. And it has given me sleepless nights because it's a huge responsibility. And I haven't actually done a wedding for a few years. So wish me luck. I'm on my way to the wholesalers. I haven't been there for probably two years because I don't really do flowers anymore um, to this extent. Anyway, you know, I just buy what, what I can get hold of locally. The weather could not be worse. Well, it 
could be snowing I suppose but then again it is only October so um, if I can I'll do a little bit of feeling it filming in the warehouse but um, that might be a bit difficult because um, you know it's a it's a wholesaler so we'll see And that is a lot of flowers and loads of work incoming. Oh lordy. Well that went fine. They were a lovely, lovely lady that I dealt with in there. And they even let me film some of the warehouse. I got permission because it's not the kind of place you mess about. So big old job now, getting them all ready to condition. I don't think anyone realises how hard florists work, you know. It's really, really hard work because um, I've got to prep all these flowers now and condition them, get them all into water, take all the lower leaves off, trim the stems, and uh, that'll take me probably about three hours. But I will film a little bit of it, but not obviously three hours, because you'll be asleep. Right, so I have come back from the wholesalers, and I am just starting to condition all the flowers. Yeah, I honestly don't think anyone realises what hard work floristry is it truly is hard work so i have done this many roses so far and basically what i am doing is getting them you know as i say we call it conditioning it's um basically where you are kind of giving the, the flowers a chance to recover from their kind of journey for want of a better expression. So these beautiful roses, the bride, that's her primary flower is white roses and they are just gorgeous. And what I'm doing is I'm just snipping all these leaves off because I want the water to concentrate getting to the head. And then I'm cutting probably a good three inches off the rule of thumb is an inch for every hour they've been out of water. So, you know, these are being used in a bouquet and in vases on the table and in a few arrangements. So I'm just going through, cutting the leaves off and then cutting a good portion of the stem. And I do the stem last so that that is very, very quickly put back into water. And um, some of these have got thorns. And for my own sake, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the, the tip off the thorn because when I make the bouquet up, I'd rather not get a thorn in my hand. So I'm going to, I've been doing this now for half an hour. Um, I've got another two box three boxes of flowers to do <laughs> joey reminds me of if if any of you ladies sew it's like that feeling when you go to the um fabric shop and you get carried away with all the fabric and then you look at all the fabric and you think oh my goodness that's the amount of work i've got in front of me so i am the wedding is three days away so the idea is forgot to cut that one super too busy talking the idea is that these are in their most perfect position and you know they'll probably only last a day after that but um it's all about 
being ready for the day. And it does seem early, you know, the temptation is to think, oh, I want them as fresh as possible, but you want these to be in full bloom when the bride has them in her bouquet. Sadly, not many roses have a scent these days. This one doesn't, that's for sure. So I will crack on with this. I just thought for anyone who's interested, you know, if you're thinking of doing it yourself, it is really hard work. I'd say that and I wouldn't do it unless you've got help because a lot of it has to be done almost on the day. So that's the first lot of roses. These aren't actually her bouquet roses. I've got special roses for that. These are for everybody else um, on the table in the arrangements, but I bought her beautiful avalanche roses, which are going to be really big heads. And um, and then lots of gypsophila. I'm really pleased with the gypsophila that I got. We always used to call this gypsophilia when I was young, but look at that. This is called Excellenza. And it's really got a lovely, full bloom of flowers on it. So, what else have I got here opened? I have got, oh goodness, I can't remember what this is called. But, can you see in there? This is for the arrangements on the celebration table. And there's a fireplace that, that needs um, decorating. So I'm going to crack on with this and, um, and when I've done this, I'll have earned a cup of tea. The weather is sunny now and then biblical rainfall. Never seen anything like it, honestly. It's like monsoon. The roads in Southampton were flooded. I'm lucky I've got a four by four, so I wasn't too worried about that, but uh, yeah, dreadful. So anyway, as I say, I will film what I can. Obviously, this is my priority, getting this right, rather than the YouTube video, but I will do what I can. I just wanted to show you the bride's roses and you can see the difference. They are absolutely beautiful avalanche roses. They're kind of traditionally a bridal flower. You can see the size of that bloom and when it's open, it'll be probably a good two inches across. So these were really expensive. I think these were about £1.90 per stem. Flowers are so expensive, people. So, you know, when you think of the cost of the flowers and then the amount of work that they take to get ready, it's no wonder they're expensive. They are a luxury indeed, but um, these are just delightful. No smell, but I am going to put a few freesias in her bouquet, which will give her a lovely um, fragrance. So... Just thought I'd show you those because I think they're stunning. So I am outside in our, what they call a breeze hut, and I've just greened up the first decoration which is for the fireplace um, behind where the bride and groom will be saying their vows and getting married. I've got to do another one for the celebration table and I've done that in two parts so that that can be quite easily carried and moved around and then I am just about to start doing the buckets that are going on the end of the aisle, well kind of between Oh, on the kind of end of the pews, just Ikea buckets. So they're just gypsophila, so I'm just gonna crack on with those now. So that's the eight buckets of gypsophila that will be going as kind of pew ends in the ceremony. So oh, lovely. Day two of the wedding flowers so I showed you the two arrangements that I've greened up which basically means getting the foliage in place because that's the filler that's kind of your support for the flowers and now I am going to start adding the flowers the roses look just beautiful so they are they're kind of the star of the show so I'm going to put in the trailing 
flowers first and then I'll start adding the roses. I'm going to try and set this up so you can see what I'm doing, but it might be a little bit difficult because obviously I'm outdoors. It's flipping freezing today, so I might as well have to go and put some more clothes on. I've just got a sweatshirt and vest up on at the moment. But uh, I've been awake since uh, half past five this morning, getting worried about this. But I can only do my best and that's what I will do. So, as I say, I will try and set this up so you can get a good view of what I'm doing, but uh, I'm not sure how easy that's going to be. So bear with me. And obviously the lighting's not great because it's a miserable, miserable cold day today. Yesterday was glorious, but today is freezing. So let's crack on. Like I say, I'm not sure how useful this is going to be, but it will just give you an idea and if nothing else, it'll give you some sympathy for florists that have to work in this cold weather and um, make beautiful things. Fingers crossed anyway. So I'm gonna start off with the, what we used to call Snapdragon. Um, oh my goodness, my brain's gone to remind me what it is called. And there's another saying in floristry, which is measure once, uh, measure twice, cut once, because obviously once you've cut the stem too short, oh, thin out, that just broke, that's a good example. So that can be, I can go a little higher up. So I need a trailing one in there. These are very thick stems, so I need to make sure it's got a clear root to the oasis. And these are going to be quite hard to transport, I must say, but hopefully we can get them there. And then obviously, whatever I do on one side, I try and replicate on the other side. Transporting these flowers is probably one of the hardest parts of the equation. But where there's a will, the venue isn't too far from us, so hopefully we only need to do one trip, but if we have to do more, we have to do more. So they're, they're a nice shape, but I just want to do another one each side of these. Keeping it shorter so I don't put too much pressure on the stem, so I don't do what I just did. If I'd have wrapped these in newspaper, they wouldn't have bent so much, but I, I don't mind them being curved because I think they give a nice fluidity to the arrangement. And then always stand back and make sure it looks balanced. I'm happy with that. So next I'm going to use what we used to call Lysianthus, but like everything in life that's changed. I mean, the cold weather is doing me a favour as far as um, preservation of flowers goes because it is literally like a fridge in here. So they're lovely. I think they're called Yonimus now, but I might be wrong. I'm not a florist. I don't pretend to be a florist. I'm just an enthusiastic amateur. I'm gonna sit these down because I think these are very pretty in their own right. Everything just gives it just a little bit more depth and interest and definition. Flowers had it, so take that off. 
Make sure you don't catch a leaf in the um, yeah you know, as you're pushing it into the oasis. You don't want a leaf so that you're pushing against a leaf for obvious reasons. And where did I put that one? I've lost it already. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's supposed to look natural. Um, not contrived so I suppose you're all shouting at me telling me where it is I've lost it I guess because it wasn't particularly a flower now that flower is in full bloom so hopefully that will still be beautiful tomorrow I love I love these flowers because you know they will move really easily the slightest movement and and they will you know, have their own motion, which I think is lovely in itself. And honestly, you try and use every part. So I've just snapped those off and pop those in there. And then one more. And by going round to the back, you give depth to the arrangement too. Similarly there. I mean, it's coming together quite quickly, isn't it? So I'm just going to put a little bit of this Veronica in here. Uh, again, for the fluidity, because it's got that lovely movement to it. Try wherever possible to use odd numbers. Trying to make sure that that's kind of connected. So I just need one more of these. Oh, I'm so cold. There is, there are heaters in here, but for obvious reasons, i.e. the flowers, I don't want to risk them getting warm. I don't want any disasters on my hand. I mean, it's quite scary seeing the roses, um, you know, kind of coming into full bloom in front of my very eyes. It's quite scary in itself. Because you think, oh, please, this be perfect. The wedding is tomorrow. So that's those. So now I'm going to start adding the flowers. And look at that. Gorgeous. So I'm going to take off what they call the guard petals. You can see these little petals here that look a bit kind of damaged. Cut that down. Every time you cut them down, they start to try to take up water kind of again. So you can see that I'm trying to get the flow so it's the same both sides. The challenge comes keeping that flow when you come into the middle. So right now I'm going to select what you might say is the sort of star of the show, which is the middle flower and put that in what is 
the middle and everything else will come from that. I have to remember that this one, as well as being used on the ceremony table, is being used on the bride and groom's table where they're eating because they're having what's called a sweetheart table. So I know that they've got round tables for all the guests and then they've got their own separate table. And so I want there to be something also at the back for them to see. But obviously the priority is the front because that's what everyone else will see. It's really hard floristry. I mean, I know I keep saying it, but it really, really is because, you know, you're working with living things and it's very challenging to get these roses to their absolute peak on the right day and hopefully that will be tomorrow. spray that I will use on this which is supposed to prolong the life of the flowers. Everything is about trying to keep them at their very best obviously. As the oasis spills with stems, it does get harder to find the grip. You can feel it. When you put the oasis in, you can feel it if it's in if it's kind of taken it, if you know what I mean. So um I'm relatively happy with that. I am just going to add some of these spray roses going to get four of these and everything you add in the way of different flowers, different textures, all add to the beauty, I believe. Pick up Gypsophilo like this, it's very kind of tangled. So the advice is shake it, and it kind of finds its own, you have to kind of take an outside stem and shake it. And it should, because it's very fragile, it breaks very, very easily. This is in theory, it comes away three hours later. There we are. I'll get one more piece. Because the bridesmaids flowers are only gypsophila, so I'm very aware. I don't really use too much until I've done 
there's, there's, that is in the bridesmaid's flowers and the bride's bouquet. Now I've got these lovely berries too. So I think I'll put the berries in first. Joe, the name of these is on the tip of my tongue. And as I've gone to tell you it, it's gone off the tip of my tongue and out the other side. <laughs> I'm sure. Anything that's damaged or looks a little bit, you know, like there's a little tiny brown petal in there. Just a brown leaf, I'm just gonna take that off because your eye, for some annoying reason, is always drawn to anything that's not quite right. I'm going to put these in quite deep. It just gives you that little bit of texture and depth. taking the leaves off here because they're just going to bite me and they're not attractive leaves at all. I know my friend who is a florist she said it's very very difficult because nowadays with Instagram people see all these amazing celebrity weddings and they want similar and then when she tells them the price, they nearly have a heart attack. They are so expensive. I mean, the flowers and mechanics for this wedding have cost over 600 pounds, which is a lot of money in anyone's book. But they do make a difference, don't they? I mean, I can they look it's funny because Gypsophila was really frowned upon for a long time as being really kind of naff. You know, it's what you always got in the um, flowers from the garage, but now it's come right back round and it's very, very popular. I think in America you call it baby's breath, don't you? But I think it's really pretty. You know, it's got a daintiness about it and a delic delicateness. Delicateness? That's not English, is it? It's, it's got a delicate, you know, feel to it and a movement. Which again, give it another dimension. So I'm going to stop talking now and just crack on with this. I'll fast forward it. I'll speed it up, I mean. And you can hopefully see the finished article very soon. I think that's, I think that looks lovely, if I say so myself. Um, right, so now I've got the clever job, because I don't know how I'm actually going to do this, of swapping these two arrangements over. But the fact that I've got this sideboard out here is very useful because I can see it from a distance. I haven't really put anything behind this. I will have to because I couldn't possibly just leave the um, Oasis, the floral foam on show, but I will probably do that in situ when I get to the venue. I'll just put some ivy or something in there. It doesn't really matter because the only person that's going to see this 
well it's the bride and groom when they're having their meal but i think they'll be so in love that they won't really be worrying about the back of the arrangement and they'll have seen it through the whole of the service and uh the registrar and i don't really care what she thinks so i'll do that now and i'll get set up with the next arrangement and we'll go from there i was merrily chatting away there and you weren't on um so you can see i've started adding the flowers to this arrangement and um I've been saying that I'm trying not to panic about how many flowers I'm getting through here because it's a little bit worse like when you do a buffet and it starts to go down you start thinking oh is there enough food so I've got to just hold my nerve and um wait and see is the short answer so um what I'm going to do actually is add a little bit more ruscus to this arrangement it's a bit more of a filler this is what's called hard ruscus and this one is called soft ruscus and um it's a great filler you know this stuff used to be cheap nothing is cheap now nothing at all when it comes to flowers and foliage and everything else in between right so what shall i do i'm going to put some more gypsopher in. Joe, I thought I'd over ordered this, but I haven't. But you know, I probably use more flat, more gyp in the um buckets than I needed to because you know I didn't want it to look skimpy. I might have to push it out in a minute. I'll put this in as kind of a frame for the roses. Again shake try and find one that's on the edge apparently this this can last nearly three days out of water before it starts to discolor I say this is the most dramatic bloom. So that's going centre stage. Uh, this time seven years ago our son got married and I did all of his flowers in the back garden in a t-shirt that's the difference with the weather this year it was gorgeous never mind that's England What I'm going to do is I'm going to gather up what I think I need to make the bride's bouquet because that's the thing that's worrying me and I will do that indoors and I'll show you how I do that hopefully. So I've come indoors to make the bride's bouquet um, and the first thing you have to do is 
prep your flowers. So I've cut down the jet. I've taken all the guard petals off the roses. I've got just three spray roses. Some lovely, oh, yeah, oh, I love freesias. Uh, a few freesias and then the eucalyptus as my foliage. Now, um, this is, as I said, this is the bit that I'm most nervous of. And I'm going to do a tied bouquet. So basically, well, these roses, the first thing I'm going to do actually is cut them down because they are so long, I can't actually physically manage them. So what I'm going to do is use this eucalyptus as the kind of frame It's so beautiful and kind of flowing that the idea is that I can thread the roses and the other flowers into this. I should have cleaned these stems off better. You don't want any anything kind of cluttering up the stems at the end. So we've got a nice little base there and then start popping in the roses. At an angle so that the stems are crossing over. There's loads of tutorials on Facebook, probably much better than I'm showing you here. But it's just practice. It really is just practice. Like everything. Nobody knew how to do this when they were born. And you know, once, if, if I don't like where the height is, I can pull those through, but all of these stems are crossing over at the, what they call the holding point for obvious reasons. That's where I'm holding it. I've got loads more of these big roses. If I think that I need them, I can add them in. I'll put some of these freesias in at this point. You can also do is if you want to you can thread a stem through and it will kind of find its own route through just a nice little broken rose there You know, if, it, if you don't like it when you've done it, you can just undo it and redo it. But the other thing I've done before, if I've been working with a friend, a good friend helped me when I was doing my son's flowers and I had to keep getting her to stand back from me and hold them. That's making my arm ache already. I'm hoping that these freesias will come out a bit more overnight. What 
I'm doing is just cutting off some of the kind of lower stems, uh, sort of stems on the jet because that's what was causing me a problem. I can use those in the vases, so nothing will go to waste. Just gonna put that chip between those roses because it's a bit floppy. And nobody needs floppy chip. Those three roses are a bit cluttered up there. I want to get a little bit of freezer in there to break that up. Because I think the whole point of flowers is, I'm just resting my arm now, is that they don't look like they're plastic, that they come out of a shop. They should look natural and have movement, in my opinion anyway. That's what I prefer. Just hope the bride agrees with me. Nerve wracking to say the least. arm is really really aching just not used to doing this it's physically demanding nice I am going to tie it off and then I'm going to ask Rob to hold it so I'm just gonna see this point here the holding point I am going to this tape is so sticky
So I'm going to ask Rob to hold this and I'm going to look at it and see whether it needs any changes. But it looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to trim these stems down now. These scissors I got, um, they're Japanese scissors, they are so sharp. I could actually cut your tip of your finger off if you're not careful. to just leave them at that length now because I'm going to put them into a vase of water and then I will later on today I will bind them tightly and put she wants hessian ribbon on here and um, yeah 